Got me Reno bound. There you go, Southern Pacific and 700 WLW. Good morning. It's Thursday morning already. I'm the Bozo. It's 12 past midnight in the Eastern Time Zone as we start into another Interstate 700. And hi to all of our friends in Denver, Colorado this morning. Listen. Hey, what? Uh, is that guy for the TV station still there? Yeah, he's around here somewhere. Tell him to take my picture. I, I've never been on TV before. <laughs> Wait a minute. I counted it up a few weeks ago. I've worked at 48 radio stations. But I did it because I wanted to. I had fun. I enjoyed it. Everything you've got in your home and use in everyday life traveled on a truck at some point along the way, and that's it. And the, Amer the people of America need to know that. Am I right? You're right! Our final hour, all of a sudden, and uh, wow, I didn't know this was going to go quite this fast, but it has been just a whirlwind here this afternoon. And we're going to uh, continue with uh, calls and conversation on the final edition of the Truck and Bozo Show here on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Dale is uh, co-hosting in spirit. We're just kind of handling the controls here for a couple of hours on a uh, Monday afternoon from New York City and from Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, I think it's time to go to uh, Todd Spencer. Is that correct, Richie? Hey, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. hey. Okay, Todd, good morning. Uh, I'm, boy, I, there I go again. Good afternoon, Todd. It's good to have you with us. Um, you are doing a little traveling yourself today. Yeah, actually, today I'm in Washington, D.C. This is uh, the, uh, motor, the meeting of the FMCSA's Motor Carrier Safety Advisory Committee, and I'm a member of that, and their meetings are generally pretty important, and I try not to miss an opportunity to uh, at least provide the perspective of the men and women behind the wheel who they may or may not get otherwise. Exactly, which is something that uh, fits uh, uh, what we're talking about here, uh, hand in glove, because that was what Dale was all about as well. You know, Mark was on, on the program a little bit earlier, Mark Reddick, and um, uh, we, we talked with Mark more on a personal level about Dale, uh, because I, I, I want, I had, I had invited you to come, uh, come on and talk a little bit more about the OOIDA side of Dale. <laughs> back a long, long, long ways. Uh, you know, I first met Dale at the Mid-America Trucking Show, basically when he first started doing the show out of Cincinnati, and, you know, was drawn to him by some folks that said, wait a minute, you know, you've got to meet this guy that's doing this trucking show, because he is the real thing, and he is all about truckers. He speaks their language, and it ought to make sense. And met Dale after that. When we really started, when we really started developing a relationship with Dale, uh, was over the Indiana boycott, you know. And basically, Dale took that on as a crusade himself, uh, simply because he felt like drivers, truckers, got the shaft. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just agreeing with you. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and But he took it personal, and he pushed it, he encouraged, he provide, provided guidance, but, you know, and, you know, I had really all the motivation, uh, you know, but what was kind of lacking was a presence in Indiana that, you know, that he wasn't able to provide, and we kind of picked up that... Uh, we kind of picked up the issue and started working with truck stop operators and drivers and setting up meetings at truck stops where the truck stop operator 
would bring lawmakers out to these meetings to hear the truckers' side of things. And there were at least eight or ten meetings that took place over the span of several months. And all this time, Bozo's, uh, Bozo's basically providing updates and encouragement and keeping this thing going. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be, I'd be, I went to virtually every one of those meetings, and I drove to all of them, and I'd be listening to Bozo as I'd be coming home at, at, at night, and they would say, boy, I sure wish somebody would call in that is at the end of one of those meetings, and, and then I'd do it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you, know, in, you know, in those days, there really weren't much for communications for drivers. Oh, what, no. What we need telling drivers to do, if you want to know what's going on with Indiana and the boycott, you got to listen to Dale, listen to Dale every night, and lots and lots of guys did. We had lots of members did, and, you know, he truly did have a loyal following, and, you know, guys that worked there, you know, they built their driving shifts behind, you know, being up to listen to his show. Absolutely. And, you know, you bring up something, too. I remember a guy told me once, Dave, it cost me $25 just to stop and call your show because, you know, you got to find a phone that works at a rest area or something. You're off the road. You stop the truck. You know, the whole nine yards. And um, guys, um, and I'll say guys because at that time it was it was mostly men, but we don't discount the ladies by any means. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. But yeah. you'd, you'd have guys out there that uh, they, they made some sacrifice to call in to Dale's program, you know, because because you know, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, it's cold, it's raining or whatever, the pay phone's out there, you're kind of getting drippy wet uh, to call into the show. And folks did it and continued to do it. <laughs> they did it. They did it religiously. And basically, he looked forward to their calls. And, you know, they all, they all spoke the same language. And, you know, while there were, you know, Dale was, when you call Dale, basically, if you as a driver, you pretty much knew you were going to reach somebody that was going to be on your side, regardless of the issue. And you know, he didn't make any, didn't he didn't mince words <laughs> on any of the issues. He was outspoken. He was opinionated, and basically, truckers were his thing. Yeah, and and you know what? Uh, that could be a, a bumper sticker right there. Todd, it sure could. Tell us a little bit about um, the uh, the uh, the donations to OOIDA. Uh, Dale requested that in lieu of flowers, folks uh, uh, send some money to you guys to to boost membership and and, and to get OIDA up up to uh, the next level of membership. Well, yeah, it was, you know that was a request from Dale and from the family. You know the the, the thing about the thing about Dale. Dale was a big supporter of OIDA, but he was a really, really big supporter of truckers. And, you know, he recognized early on with things like Indiana, with some of the legislative stuff that came up through the years, he recognized the tremendous power, the clout that drivers themselves had if they just were united behind a common purpose. He was, you know, the biggest uh, enthusiast for our organization. But when I say organization, he was the biggest enthusiast for truckers. There was, you know, there's simply no reason that this is an industry that's this big, yet it gets basically short tripped in so many areas of, in the government, in the legislative, in the regulatory arena. And that was a big, big frustration for Dale that, you know, that, hey, guys. And, you know, that's what's all behind working together, you know, take be a part of something that's going to make your industry better, your future better, something he felt strongly about always. You know, uh, well said, and, uh, and and that truth rings out, and, and will continue to do so uh, through the uh, efforts of OIDA, the membership, and, uh, hey, the boost that, uh, you know, uh, this occasion is, is, is going to give to, again, the organization, but who is the organization but just a bunch of truck drivers, right? Oh. <laughs> Certainly, <laughs> but it's a bunch of truck drivers that are basically – dedicated to the common purpose of building a better future for themselves and those that come behind us. I mean, there is no, there's going to be no substitute for trucking. As 
Bozo said a million times, anything that you touch in America has going to be an on a truck, and it's simply going to be that way because trucks yeah. are – if people are going to be everywhere, trucks are going to be everywhere. Understood, understood. Todd, thank you so much for being part of this special program this afternoon, and uh, and Godspeed there in, in uh, Washington, D.C. with uh, Mixap. <laughs> well, the Mixap meeting here today, the biggest agenda item we have is uh, creating a subcommittee to kind of look at the inner workings of CSA, the, the the not the, the not controversial CSA program to make certain <laughs> that the agency is looking at the right things, and and of course, in some instances I think they are. In other instances, I think they're clearly not. And of course, kind of the rest of the story is there are plenty of people within trucking that are for basically will work really hard to make sure they don't look in the right places. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Todd Spencer, Executive Vice President, OOIDA. Thanks again, Todd. It's about quarter after, and uh, before we go to the break, we're going to head to Chris T. of Freewheeling. Hey, Chris T. Hey, Dave. Good to talk to you. How are you? Same here. Same here. Good, good, good. Uh, I got to say that even after he uh, came back from the moon, he retained his humble demeanor. He never really capitalized on being the first man to walk on the moon. And I, I think that was a wonderful thing. That he, <laughs> as a, as a, hang on, is this the Neil Armstrong tribute? No, thank you. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Who? Fucking who? Oh, goodness gracious alive. Chris T. At it again. I have to say one of my favorite things about Dale was his sense of humor. I like that he was irreverent. I well, he would have liked that bit right there, man. I like that he made people laugh. It's not an easy thing to do. And I remember a conversation I had a fr with a friend of mine years ago. We were both way into talk radio. I had been doing talk radio since 1989, and, and we were talking about all these people that are you uh, giants in the talk radio world, and I asked him who his favorite guy in talk radio was, and he said the truck and bozo. And at that point, I hadn't heard of the truck and bozo. I mean, this is back in the late '80s, early '90s, and uh, I had to I had to look into it because this was somebody whose opinion I really respected when it came to talk radio. And of all of the people you could have mentioned to say the truck and bozo really intrigued me, and to to then go and listen to what he did and how he entertained uh was just, just a revelation to me mm -hmm. and uh you know you were there on friday in dallas the, the the love the outpouring of love for that man uh was you know really moving it's just uh, it really uh, was yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and that word spread through that uh, convention center just in in no time at all didn't it it really did yeah i mean that's the thing about the medium that we've chosen to work in, uh, you know, the, the, once the word is out, it gets out to a lot of people all at the same time. And so, uh, and, and I feel like, you know, when, when we started doing freewheeling in 2006, uh, being these newcomers, these greenhorns, to use the, the trucking term, uh, we were accepted. I mean, uh, Dale uh, listened and, and accepted us, and you listened and, and accepted us, and Bill Mack. Uh, I met one time at a, at a truck show, said, uh, I want to introduce myself. I said, I don't know if you know who I am. He said, I know who you am. I listened. And it was a revelation to me to be in this this uh, this, uh, this small number of people. I mean, uh, uh, reading about Neil Armstrong, you find out there were only 12 people who walked on the moon. It seems sometimes like the, the, the people who do trucking radio is a small fraternity. And to be in that fraternity, I feel really honored. It is a small fraternity, and you are part and parcel of it, my friend. You certainly are. Chris T., uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really uh, was really thrilled that we got a chance to uh, get you on here this afternoon. And um, don't uh, don't lose that moon rock you have. Okay, thank you oh, so you, much. I shouldn't have said that. He doesn't really have a real moon rock, folks. It's a fake. Whew. Sorry, Chris, didn't mean to let that out. Are we going to a break now? I would say yes, we're going to a break right now.
Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Right, we're going to go right back to the phones now on this final edition of the Truck and Bozo Show here on uh, Road Dog 106, Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Uh, Dale Summers hosting in spirit. Dave Nemo here in Nashville just kind of hanging out. Richie Oliveri is actually the one doing all the work up in New York City. And uh, we'll hear from Sharon a little bit later on at the end of the uh, program. And also our own Dr. Tim Ridley will be with us uh, to do uh, uh, to give a, a, just a little bit of a, a inspirational talk and, and, and a short prayer, which I think is a, a fitting way to, to close the program. But right now we are heading to... Uh, uh, Missouri to talk to Taxi Girl. Good afternoon. Hi, Dave Nemo. You're doing a man's job at the lake, I must say. Well, thank you. Um, I haven't heard anybody else mention, and I wanted to bring up Dale Summers' film career. Dale Summers' film career. Okay, lay this out for us. Okay, I, I was attending an oh-so-joyous company orientation at a Midwest trucking company, and, of course, the process of orientation has, uh, has it for the safety feature. They show several videos, DVDs on different topics. So at this point, we're all about nodding out. And I had known Dale from the radio and, you know, just the satellite part. My, my career doesn't go back that far. But my ears perk up. Somebody pops in a VHS tape. Hello, I'm Dale Summers, and I'm here to talk to you about trucking accidents. That <laughs> was so cute. Huh. wearing a sport coat, striped tie. It had to have been from the 80s. That's all I can say. It, 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 my best recollection was from the 80s. And, you can always uh, tell by the la the lapels, you know. <laughs> well, exactly, in the width of the tie. And um, it was uh, really a very standard industrial film. But, you know, he, he had such a mellifluous voice. And but what they had him do is, you know, he was like a dark background with the spot on him. And he slowly walked, picking his emphasis on each Thing, he slowly got closer to the camera, so by, you know, the very end, it was like a full face shot of Dale saying, don't you say anything, you're an accident, this is what you do, and it was great. I mean, it, it, I, I never really seen a picture of him or anything, and I feel kind of fortunate that I actually got to see, you know, he was captured in film, his persona, you know, it was pretty cool. Wow, that is pretty cool. I, uh, I, I wonder if there's a copy of that VHS still floating around someplace. You know, I asked the uh, company if I could have it because, you know, I figured, you know, I did, Dale would want it or, you know, I, I, I'd ask Rich to mention it to him. And I don't really, you know, because VHS is an archaic format, I don't know that there's many of them left. You know? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Now that you've brought it up, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if, if something pops up someplace, Taxi Girl. Well, thanks for that. That's uh, something uh, I don't know if any of us around here knew about. Did you know about that, Richie? I did. I um, uh, Linda's called in a couple of times, or Taxi Girl, whatever her name is, has called in a couple of <laughs> times. So I kind of know her. I, I know her personally. And, uh, yeah, she's mentioned it to me, and, and I begged her when she first told me about this. I said, oh, my God, whatever it is, money is no object. We'll break the bank if you find that VHS, and, and, and I will air it every – I would have made it part of the show open every day. <laughs> but we never, we never found it. Well, maybe you've just instituted a scavenger hunt there with Taxi Girl. I don't know. Well, I, I let me preface it by saying I ain't paying anybody if they find it, so <laughs> that deal's off. Hey, don't forget, a peso is just like a quarter. <laughs> well, I ain't got pesos either, so thank you, Linda. Thanks, All right, guys. thank you. Thank you very much. About 28 after, let's uh, jump out to Oregon, shall we? Oregon Fever is out there. Good afternoon to you. Doing pretty good. Uh, I got a little surprise for a burger place. You wouldn't you believe the name. The, you wouldn't believe the name of one of the burgers. A burger the bozo place. burger. The yeah, bozo burger. The wow. The bozo. They got a bozo burger out here in Boardman, Oregon. 
Yeah. Wow. Yep. I did not know that. Boardman, Oregon, huh? Yeah, one, mile marker 164, plenty of truck parking. If you want a bozo burger, come out here. All right. Well, thank you for that. I did not know that. Um, we will uh, put that on the menu. Thank you very much, Oregon Fever. Hey, let's uh, talk to uh, uh, an old friend. Flag Waver's with us up in Ohio. Flag Waver, good afternoon to you. Hi, Dave. Hi. I, don't, uh, I can't really come into what all Bozo meant to me. I kind of can repeat what Snuppy said. Uh, I actually... And not many people would repeat what Snuffy says, so that's really yeah. saying something. <laughs> if you could there, have a, a, maybe KC tickle the keys there with Willie Google and look up a poem by Michael Josephson called A Life That Matters. And if you can slide that in there somewhere and read that, I think you and probably Bill and Probably anybody that gets into truck and radio, at first they probably don't realize how much they really matter to the truck drivers. But all of you throughout my career have mattered a lot. I mean, we ran the East Coast. I mean, we listened to Bozo, but, well, I'll get off here unless somebody else there. Flag waver, thank you, man, and uh, I, I know what you mean. And you know what that 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 uh, if, if that that aspect of what well what we do here in this business, um, first thing I ever learned about trucking was that truck drivers can spot a phony a mile away, and if you're not yourself, they're just you're just lost. And I think all of us here have learned from one another just to be ourselves. Oh, I'm thinking we're going to a break, but. Uh, we're not. <laughs> We're still on. Okay. So at any rate, um, yeah. And uh, by the way, Flag Waver is uh, real uh, uh, involved in the uh, Wreaths Across America program. And uh, I hope you heard the announcement about that uh, today, uh, earlier today. Uh, there's really going to be a push now to put a wreath on every uh, grave at Arlington this year. And it's going to be quite a... Uh, quite a uh, an accomplishment hey let's jump over to um nebraska go to america's heartland kimasabi is there good afternoon to you good afternoon old Nemo, as uh Bose would say that was uh, yeah. that was by the way your uh, your seniority on trucking radio is where that come from he explained <laughs> it one time <laughs> uh and I can attest for that. Uh, one thing I was going to talk about was uh, his last subject on the, his last show there. He kept asking about uh, uh, why they kept saying uh, filling in for Dale Summers on the Truck and Bozo show, KC, and, of course, Jonesy. And uh, I kind of related to that when he left uh, XM Night Radio eight and a half years ago. And uh, Bubba Bo took the spot that he left open. Of course, Steve slipped down and... That guy just took seven kinds of hell for uh, with Bozo withdrawals. Now, you could probably relate to that after filling, after taking over for Charlie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just yeah. a different voice, you know. It's just, uh, although, you know, uh, eight and a half years, and thank, thank uh, XM Sirius for the, their patience with his health problems and keeping him on there. It kept him with us longer. It kept him alive longer, I do believe, being able to stay on the airwaves. Uh, we have a very good relationship the way that worked out, him filling this slot uh, from the night slot, which was, as you know, is pretty rough on your health. I mean, you, you could probably really, really relate to all of this. Uh, you know, like I told him, I said, you know what? They, they just, they, they're not going to even admit anybody's ever going to fill your shoes or take your place. I said, they've got to tell them they're just, they're just filling in for you. <laughs> After yeah. That, but, uh, out there. But, uh, yeah, I, I got one of the best compliments from him one time. Uh, I told the joke, as a matter of fact, it was on the end of the Bill Mack show. And it was at a time where he had just got the word about his wife's colon cancer, and he was having a hard time getting on the air. And I guess he was less, less, listening, and it cracked him up when he came on the air. And he thanked me on the air for that joke, and yeah, that, that just doesn't stick with me forever. But uh, the timing was un un unintentional consequences, which were very positive. I, I just can't, you know, 
It's one of those one of those memorable ones for me. Um, and uh, the last few shows, uh, you know, he, he just wasn't, still wasn't there. He, he, he used to answer mine. Uh, uh, he would imitate uh, Tonto and move Jim Osabi, you know, <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> but I call him Tonto, call him Tonto in return, you know. And, and that was kind of a regular stick there. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be missed. Uh, whoever takes over, will you know, we'll carry on and. I don't know what's going to become of the Truck and Bozo show as far as XM and the rights to the name, but it'd be nice to hear that carried on. But anyway, old Casey's done a good job of filling in that spot anyway for now. How's that going right. to work out? We do not know, sir. We absolutely do not know that part of it. But uh, Kimasabi, thanks. Thanks for. Uh, for getting in with us here this afternoon. I know it's been difficult trying to get in. I know the phones, uh, Ricky is telling us the phones are really just uh, jamming, and uh, we, we certainly appreciate that. Hey, let's take that break right now, and we'll be right back. Entering the uh, the last stretch here this afternoon as we um, move toward uh, seven o'clock in the east, six o'clock here in the central zone. Uh, Sharon is going to join us. Lumpy is going to join us on the program here in just a little bit, and our own Dr. Tim Ridley will be with us on the program as well in just a little bit as well with a uh, a closing prayer and uh, a bit of inspiration this afternoon. And I want to thank him in advance for doing that. I also want to, again, thank uh, Dave Gorab at Sirius XM Satellite Radio for uh, uh, brainstorming this with us and, uh, and uh, inviting me to participate, and I really do appreciate that. We're here in Nashville. Richie's doing all the work, though, up there in, in uh, New York City. And Richie, I believe Asphalt Soldier is uh, with us in Ohio. Good afternoon to you. Well, Asphalt soldier. Hello there, hello there, Mr. Dave. Hello. How are you? Doing good, thanks. Well, just, just just to make sure that I get this in, everybody's been asking me if I'll say it, so I will. I'll say, hi, Daddy! <laughs> that's how I always <laughs> greeted Dan. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness been a rough couple of days hasn't it yeah it has and yeah. um it, it was, and, and you know, Mark. Read, I, we had Mark on earlier, but Mark and I had a long talk. It, and it's very difficult to have long talks at the at the trucking shows because you're busy and you're going in every different direction. But uh, we were able to grab a couple of chairs in a quiet corner. And uh, stuff like this always happens during stuff like that. It seems, you know, and uh, uh, it, it really catches you off guard. And and uh, uh, but uh, but at the same token, there are so many people in the same place at the same time that uh, a lot of folks were able to uh, give some support to one another too. Not just on the phone or internet, long distance, but uh, in 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 close proximity in the, at the truck show. So I think that 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 was kind of a, a nice bit of timing, if if there is such a thing in a in a case like this. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, I, I've I've told Dale this many times, and. You know, the first time I ever met him, I was about 15, riding around with my grandpa. He was down at one of the Kentucky um, truck stops there doing, doing a uh, broadcast. And, you know, didn't didn't know him from Adam at that point, you know. And then I get back out here on the road all, all on my own about six, eight years ago and found him on the radio again. You mm -hmm. know, he just uh, a great man, a great father to his kids and those of us who call him daddy which is quite a few of us 
you know, I mean, one of the fondest memories I've got is night, what was it? It was 2005, I believe, Christmas Day. My phone rings, and I look down, and I'm like, who's calling me from Cincinnati? It was a Cincinnati number, and it was Dale calling me on Christmas Day. Just, wow. just to wish me and the kids and my wife a, a Merry Christmas. Nice. You know, he, nice. He kept my number somehow, you know, and that, that that was the first time he ever called me, me personally, you know, and then after that, you know, we, we talked many times and, you know, and I got in the habit of sending him a birthday card every year with as many different states lottery, instant lottery tickets as I could get. <laughs> Shove them into that card. <laughs> and he, as, as far as I know, he only ever won one time. He he won a free ticket from Kentucky, and I think he cashed it in, and he didn't get nothing. And he went nah. home to Houston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dave, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Richie and everybody else there for for taking care of us today and letting us share our our memories of Dale. And I'll talk at you guys later. Asphalt Soldier, thank you very much. Thanks for. Uh... All right. Thanks for sharing with us here this afternoon. It's about 17 till, and Girl Watcher is down in Texas. Uh, top of the afternoon, Girl Watcher. Hey, Dave. Thank you very much, and I'm going to make this short and sweet. I appreciate, like all the other truckers, that uh, Sharon, Lumpy, the whole summer family, uh, shared Dale with us. Uh, They'll never know how much it meant. And, Richie, if you would, uh, you know what to do after these next two comments. Hey, how many days till Christmas? Bicycle. Cheap sound effects. Here we go. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> he says cheap sound effects, but he gets royalties every time he does that. See, that's why he's doing it. Hey, nothing, uh, so nothing's free in this here. town. <laughs> If, if, if it's one thing him. Bozo taught me, you charge, charge for everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's about uh, quarter till. And, uh, well, let's, uh, let's take some more calls, shall we? Uh, let's go to Lunch Meat in Texas. Lunch Meat. Hey, Lunch Meat. How are you? How you doing, Dave? Okay, man. Hey, I, I, I listened to Bozo for a while, but I only called in a couple of times, but he always made you feel like he remembered you. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I listened to a promo uh, Richie played the other day where he said at the end of the show, Dale Summer goes home and Bozo stays there. And it makes me want to repeat something I said the other day to uh, Free Willing is that when a good lawyer called Dale Summer, the truck and Bozo picked up and said, Who's on my telephone? Mm hmm. Uh huh. So. Yeah, so, and he's yeah. in a good place now. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You can't leave as many people behind who loved him and admired him and uh, were helped by him and not be in a good place at this point, that's for sure. Yeah, you know, that it's like he wore his love, sure. his life on his sleeve, you know. He was like a mm -hmm. person. Well, lunch meet, thank you so much. Uh, where are you? I'm in uh, Beaumont, Texas. Okay. All right. We'll have a safe trip. Are you going? I, I hope you're not going east. Yeah, I'm going east. I'm trying to get to the house over there in Alabama. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, be careful over there, man, uh, with that storm. I will. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. And uh, let's grab uh, Hawaii, and uh, then we'll take a, a break, I think. Uh, Hawaii's up in Indiana. How hey, Hawaii, how are you? Good, Dave. And yourself? Okay. I, you know, it's as far back as I can remember that I've been in trucking, and actually before I even started driving, my dad, his whole career, he always kept this, like, daily journal of his trips back and forth across this country. And all the time you'd see uh, comments in there about, I had to stop and waste $25 in three hours listening to that damn bozo. Yeah. <laughs> And then, <laughs> you caught me mid swallow. Everybody's catching me mid swallow here. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that's the way it was, though. You know, it really was. You had to stop the truck, get out of the truck, find the phone. It's usually broken, then you go find another one. Then you know, 
Um, and by the time you get there, whatever you were going to call about was over with. <laughs> it's crazy there's stuff. There's a few times where my mom would yell at my dad and say, hey, Dale's on the phone. He needs some info. My dad would get on there and he'd say, yeah, what you got, Dale? And they'd, they'd be talking for an hour and he'd say, okay, well, I'll catch you on the road. I thought this guy Dale he was talking to was just another trucker out there. And then mm-hmm. I actually got truck and started training. Dad tells me, hey, we're going to pull up over here at this next truck stop. Uh, uh, I got I to I gotta catch the Bozo show. So uh, we pull up and we stop. He tunes in Dale's show and the and, uh, guy comes on, you know, I'm Dale Summers, the truck and Bozo. And I said, yeah, that's funny, Dad. He's got the same name as that trucker buddy of yours that you're always talking to. He goes, that guy ain't a trucker buddy. That's Dale. That's this guy. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And ah. about, about three years later, I finally got up the courage and called Dale on the phone. I'm talking to Dale, and Dale tells me, you know, you uh, your voice reminds me of a good friend who passed away just a couple of years ago. And, you know, I used to call in the show all the time. I said, what was his name, Buzzard? He's like, yeah, do you know him? Yeah, he's my dad. He's the one that introduced me to your show. He goes, well, I hope you ain't as a big a pain as your dad was. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to. I try not to. <laughs> you know, I tell you, that's, I mean, so I knew about Dale. And, you know, there's, you go back to my dad's books, and, I mean, your name's in there. I mean, I knew about you before I ever came out on the road. And Dale, and I mean, Dale was definitely his uh, his favorite uh, I remember uh, when my baby sister was born, my mom couldn't get a hold of my dad, and she got a hold of Dale, and Dale, on his own time, actually tracked down my dad and told him, look, you got to call home, you got a new baby girl at home. Not too many people out there in the world will spend their own time, after he's got off the radio, trying to track down a trucker going across the country. But he found speaks, out where my dad was. You know, speaks volumes. Her. Yeah, I don't know where everyone left the message there for. Them. You ever notice how the 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 that the little? Of course, it's not little to you or your dad, because but in this grand thirty thousand foot view of things, that's one of those little things that makes all the difference uh, in someone's life and 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 carries with someone for for the rest of their lives. So I so uh, thank you for that and. Um, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Well, let's grab Diesel. I'm I'm sorry, Tennessee Diesel Cowboy, but down in Louisiana. Uh, Welcome to the program. Hey, Dave. How you doing? Hey. Okay. Um, I just, I got a lot to say, but I'm going to try to make this short and sweet. Short and sweet. uh, uh, Dale, to to us, I I think I speak for a lot of the other drivers whenever I say this. He was more than just a... a radio personality that came to us from four to seven each night. Uh, he was more than just a friend, but he was a brother. And uh, whenever we lost Dale, I, I believe we lost one of our own. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. You are you are spot on there, and I think that uh, you speak uh, for everyone uh, listening right now, and for those who aren't able to listen at the moment, but anyone who uh, has been touched by Dale through uh, his program, through his uh, personal involvement, and uh, through uh, the stories that you guys are are telling here. Uh, Tennessee Diesel Cowboy, thank you. We're going to take a quick break. Right after the break, uh, Sharon will join us for a few moments, and then uh, our own Tim Ridley. We've been uh, using the word family. We've been using the word brother quite a bit over the last several days, and they all ring true. But now let's bring uh, the whole family idea together, uh, the trucking family out on the road. And uh, Sharon is with us on the phone uh, right now, Lumpy. Hey, Sharon. Hey, Dave. How are you? Okay, okay. And uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, just taking a few moments to uh, say hello to everybody this afternoon. I, you know, I cannot tell everyone 
how much we all appreciate all their calls and their notes. And it's just been, I mean, I can just see Dale laughing his head off. He's, he's so happy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said earlier, and I mean this sincerely because I, I kind of felt this earlier that uh, I am not co-hosting. The, I'm not hosting this. I may be co-hosting, but I think uh, Dale's hosting this whole thing in spirit here. And uh, it's just, uh, I think, a, a beautiful send off that everybody uh, has participated in here this afternoon. I think you're right. Does that mean I should come and hit you on the head with a skillet? Well, uh, you got one of them <laughs> Nerf skillets around. I like those Nerf skillets. Want, they do eggs what? real well. I want everyone to know that, you know, the big baby. Oh, that hurts my head. I hit my own head for that that, that bit. It wasn't me, him. It was me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Taking one for the team on the radio, huh? He said I was giving him a headache not to do that anymore. So I would hit my head and he'd say, ow. <laughs> <laughs> well uh we uh we again want to uh, what can we say that hasn't been said but i think the feelings will go on for years and years and, and for lifetimes and for all the good that dale did for uh all of the drivers out there and their families uh and and the kids coming up uh, it's just been a magnificent career and uh, we are so blessed that we were able to share a little bit of time with him uh, on this earth. Well, you know, he, I think he considered everyone his family. Our, two of our sons are here with me now, and Grumpy is here, and Lucky Lady are here. Uh, so I'm good now. I don't know what I'm going to be like when I come home to an empty house. Well, we, we, we all, we do understand that. And many of us have been there before. So, uh, we, uh, we empathize and, uh, we, we love you. And, uh, th and again, thanks for, for being part of, uh, this little thing that we're doing here this afternoon. We really appreciate it, Sharon. Well, I appreciate it so much. And thank you to everyone. Richie, keep in touch with me. <laughs> right now? Or after the show or what right now you want me to quit right now i mean <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh in the future <laughs> i got you sharon uh, be, be good and my heart goes out to you and the family and i love you guys always thank you they all adored you well he should have told me once in a while i'm just kidding and i always you know i love and i love mm. bill mack i always did and i've talked with some of the artists donna fargo gene watson and they were very very upset but uh, everybody has just been wonderful, and I want to thank you so much. We are going to close uh, our program this evening, uh, the final uh, edition of the Truck and Bozo Show, with uh, Dr. Tim Ridley. I would like to ask all the drivers, if you don't have your headlights on right now, turn your headlights on, and let's uh, have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this celebration of legacy and legend of our great colleague Dale Summers and we're asking you to go with the, the, the Summers family as well in this time of bereavement cover each one of us Lord with your blood and touch each one of our listeners the road dogs out there as well and help them to be able to cope and let all know even the family as well as the road dogs that you are with us all in this time in Jesus name amen Tim, thank you so much. My pleasure. A beautiful end to a, a beautiful program. Uh, thanks to everyone, uh, both uh, in the radio family and in the uh, trucking family and in the uh, personal family for being with us on the program this afternoon. A special thanks to Richie Oliveri. Rich, it's been an honor working with you. This, this was great, and, and Sharon hit it best that this would be a show Dad would be proud of. And I we never, and right. we didn't make any mistakes. Usually we make mistakes, and I think we probably should have made a few mistakes here and there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still got a minute. <laughs> True. What can you, what can you do wrong in a minute? <laughs> Please don't cry. We both know that I'm not what you need.
hope life treats you kind, and I hope that you have all that you ever dreamed of, and I wish you joy and happiness. But above.